talk about my own dad and he said, you know, I've been in supply chain for 10 years and he, he didn't understand what supply chain was. He only understood during COVID when he couldn't get the product that he needed. So he couldn't get his iPhone, he couldn't get whatever products he had actually ordered on Amazon to get to his door. So supply chains are now far more evident and the actual different partners in the supply chain are evident to consumers. Wayne at Goodson and I'm your managing editor of Bedtimes and Sleep Savvy magazines and I'm here today with Alexis Bateman and she is talking today at our conference about the path towards supply chain sustainability. Those are two words that you don't often hear together. To school us on what role does supply chain transparency play in sustainability? Yeah, absolutely. So supply chains, like you said, supply chain and sustainability are two topics that are coming together now, thinking about the impact mm -hmm. of supply chains of, in sustainability. So we see that as firms look at their overall impact across emissions, water, human mm -hmm. rights, mm -hmm. uh, other ESG issues that actually supply chain plays a huge uh, role in that. So um, mm -hmm. as much as 80% of a product's carbon impact can actually lie in the supply chain. Wow. So you, you can't only think about where you're going downstream, you have to be thinking about upstream too. It's yeah. two directions. Mm -hmm. That is tricky. Now. What are the top concerns that firms should be thinking about right now when it comes to transparency in supply chain? Yeah, so some of the concerns are that it's not, it's no longer voluntary. So a lot of um, you know com companies are a little bit comfortable with where it's at right now. It's sort of a voluntary uh, thing that sustainability be the you know the good corporate citizen. But now there's forthcoming regulation being put out in the U.S. and Europe, SEC, uh, other EU regulations that actually require you to have uh, uh, upstream transparency in your upstream and downstream transparency in your supply chain to be able to account for your sustainability impact. And that's heavily cross carbon, but it's going to be rolling into other dimensions like human rights. Uh, this actually is occurring within uh, within the U.S. where if you're inputting a, importing a good and you can't verify the source of origin of some of the components, you can actually have your product blocked at the border. Uh, and so there's a lot of actual really uh, strict requirements coming into play that are no longer voluntary. So uh, the top concern is it's it's becoming compliance. It's not just voluntary anymore. The other you know big kind of uh, symbolic uh, shift is that it's just a lot more uh, 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 it's just a lot more prominent in the public sphere, right? So stakeholders across investors, your consumers, shareholders, um, shareholders yes. And so uh, I, the public is looking to this topic more than it ever was before. So any kind of, you know, thinly veiled goals or greenwashing isn't tolerated anymore. There's a lot more scrutiny on how companies are setting these goals and how they're actually achieving them. And implementing them. And it's, I hope you heard the part about it. it's not going to be voluntary for, for much longer. So now finally, give us some tools. Like, where can firms look to to kind of get a better understanding when it comes to transparency? Yeah, so there's definitely different tools, and I think they fall into uh, three buckets, right? So definitely people are looking to technology, and so they want to know actually how do we, you know, account for our, our impact, whether you're looking at um, assessing your carbon emissions within uh, manufacturing sites, whether that be in the transportation, uh, what are the other, uh, like, technologies we can adopt to not only just account for our impact, but reduce that impact. So technology is a big bucket. Um, there's a, a lot of software coming out to help actually integrate your data sources so that you can account for your impact, track you know metrics and KPIs over time in your performance. But then you know the other tools are really the people in the process, right? So we we look to technology as this opportunity to uh, innovate and advance and reduce the manual burden. But it is also about you know partnerships across the supply chain, suppliers and customers. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, Across, working across the supply chain, across industries, you know, specifically, uh, for instance, here in the in the uh, mattress industry, right? Working across with with your competitors, working with your with your suppliers to actually um, drive adoption, understand where the hot spots of impact lie, and work together. So it's it's a lot of you know investment on the technology we can adopt, and and there is a lot of advancement there, you know, uh, uh, in many different dimensions. But then it is the the people and the processes about how we're coming together, uh, you know, identifying what. Uh, impact we can have in, in working across industries. Across industries. So it sounds like the, with almost anything, sustainability is definitely going to require a village. 
Yes. It's, it's going to be a team effort. Well, Alexis, thank you so much you for being for here me. today and bringing mm -hmm. us all of your knowledge because sustainability is such an important uh, topic now for our industry. You all, please keep tuning in to our videos and our coverage as we are trying to monthly cover sustainability for you. And as always, have a great night's sleep. Mm -hmm.